Hello, YouTube. <laughs> what you're looking at here is a ton of two amp fuses. I have a little, a little bag here with different types of fuses and stuff. Um, I have been trying to figure out what's been going on with the refrigerator here. This um, Noir cold refrigerator doesn't seem to want to operate in electric mode or even gas mode. And I had checked out the uh, the circuit breaker board underneath here, and they all seem to be good. All the um, the fuses there and the circuit breakers are all set and seem to be working. But yet, this refrigerator still didn't want to get cold. So I was contemplating buying a 120-volt refrigerator to replace this and just use this one as a food pantry, a cabinet, which is really sad because these refrigerators are worth a lot of money. And it's nice to have an RV refrigerator in your RV, especially since I have um, access to pretty much unlimited electricity at this point. So you're seeing me upgrade and switch to electric cooking systems. You can see I just had a little steak cooked up here. Dollar Tree pork steak. Yeah, tried it out on the Lean Mean Fat Reducing Grilling Machine by George Foreman. So I'm in process of switching to all electric instead of gas because gas costs me money and has to be refilled. Electric at the RV park where I'm staying, it's included in the price. So if I can run things off electricity, that's even better. Oops, let me get the part here. I decided to uh, go outside and check the panel. Apparently there uh, is a panel access panel for the RV's refrigerator in the back. And this is what it looked like. It was kind of ugly looking. It was uh, this little plastic thing here. I don't know if you can see this with the metal screen here and a hornet's nest. <laughs> it's like I still have a hornet's nest in there that I gotta get out. But anyhow, this is what the panel looks like on your RV. And it has this little square knob that you turn the handle and it comes out. I only got one side. I'll, I'll remove that. And probably clean this thing out a little bit. But looked around and saw some rusty spot here and thought that might be a potential problem. Those wires are kind of corroded. I know we're out of focus here, but those wires were kind of corroded right there. But then notice it had two little uh, round fuse holder thingies. And um, they were hard to access because, you, you know, all this stuff is in the way. So you got to kind of stick your finger in there and kind of work it out. But took them both out, and that other one seems to be intact. But this one here, you can see, clearly see, well, I don't know if you can clearly see, but I can clearly see the fuse is blown. Yeah. So I'm thinking this might be the reason the whole thing hasn't been working. It would have something to do with it. The, the problem, though, is this fuse... I think it's a 3 amp fuse. It says 250 slash 312. Maybe, yeah, 3 amp, 3A, which is 3 amps. All my fuses there, my fuse collection that I just showed you previously, are all 2 amps. See how it says 2A, 250, 2A, 2 amps. So it's one whole amp difference, which might be enough to blow. But I'm going to go ahead and try it and then head over to the store to Walmart or something and see if I can find a 3 amp fuse. But meanwhile, I'm going to try putting a 2 amp fuse in there in its place and plug it in and see if we can't get the refrigerator working. Because if it works, I just save myself from having to buy an electric refrigerator and then I can check to see if this thing works in gas mode, in electric mode, in 2, you know, I mean in um, 12 volt as well as in um, 120 volt mode. Because if, if it all works, then I'm in there. Yeah. This would be really nice to have this working because then the RV is pretty much all operational. Other than, you know, the leaking bathroom now that i got to deal with. But let me go ahead and try plugging this in and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to replace the 3 amp fuse with the 2 amp fuse, which means it can blow a lot faster. But we're going to go ahead and try it. And if it works, we're in business. I just need to find a 3 amp fuse later to um, replace this. So let me take this out. It just comes like pops out. I'll put the other one in. And when it goes in, just so you know, there's like these little notches. I don't know if you can see the notch on the holder here. You got to line the notch right up and twist it, twist it down and turn it so it locks into place. It's kind of a pain. I don't know who designed this with all the wires, the, the metal poles, I mean metal pipes and stuff in the way, which is stupid. It's right in the way of accessing the, um, the fuse connection. So, but I'm going to go ahead and try that and let's see what happens.
by the way, I showed you the wrong hole. <laughs> the fuse connector is this other hole right here. See how it has the, the two keyed areas? See how they're kind of open on the side? So I gotta line up the, um, can't film while I'm doing this, but do you see how there's keys here on the thing? See the little notches? I gotta line the notch up, push it in, and turn it. And right now I have the, um, the refrigerator set to off. I don't want to try to do this with it on. It'll probably blow a fuse right away. But I'm going to um, plug it in, make sure it's sit sit sitting well. The fuse is sitting completely in there. Then I'm going to go turn the unit on. And s then I might turn it off and come back out and look and see if the fuse blew. Because if the fuse blew, it's not going to work. If the fuse is still intact, then that's good. And Because I'm going to head over to Walmart here shortly to make a run. Because i got to buy a new air mattress. And then... Um, see if we can't get this uh, fuse situation straightened out and if I can get this working we're in business we can actually start to um, save money on food and the RV starts to become more functional as a home right now I've been bringing ice from work which is not ideal so we'll try this out and see what happens all right it was kind of a pain but I did use my fingers to kind of push push it in there and turn it to the right clockwise until it locked so I think it's locked now it's not coming out and I did the same with the other side so both fuses are in place now and what we're gonna do is try to turn this guy on I saw the instructions actually they printed it on the bottom of the refrigerator this particular model doesn't have a selector mode it only has like um, this for gas mode or electric mode and then the um, the thermostat and also a flame indicator but from reading this, I don't know if you can see here, it says that, you know, in electric mode, you have to set the thermostat to the desired setting, then set the AC standby DC switch. But that's only the models that have it. This one doesn't have it, so there is no switch that I'm aware of. Then set the igniter switch to off. You only use that on gas mode. Push and turn the electric gas selector to electric. and then release it you know you push it in to turn the knob then you release it and it comes out so what I'm gonna do right now it's on off I'm gonna push it in and I'm gonna turn it until it says electric I'm gonna pop it out and in theory it's on now so in theory this is supposed to start getting cold <laughs> so I turned it on I wish there was some kind of light to indicate that it was working I noticed uh, the light here doesn't seem to be working. You know, there's an indoor light here on the refrigerator that's not working. I don't know if I hear it. I don't know if it's supposed to make any noise or anything. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it back off and go remove the fuse and take a look at it again. Then I'm gonna run to Walmart and see if I can find a three amp fuse. If it blew it, definitely not gonna work. If it didn't blow it, there's a chance this is gonna work and I'll just get several three amp fuses just to have it on standby and see what happens. So for now, even though I turned it on, I turned it on so power would go through it to see if it would work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. There, it's on off mode. And I'm gonna go back outside and see if my fuse blew. Because, you know, it was supposed to be three amps. I'm gonna to have to take two hands again, but I'm gonna push that in and turn it to the left then bring it straight back out and take a look at my fuse. And if the fuse is intact, you know, instead of broken like this one here, then that means it'll work off two amps, even though really it can go up to three amps. So I do need to upgrade it to three amps. And then I'll try to clean this out a little bit and get rid of the wasting and get the cover back on here because this is really bad. <laughs> it's highly uh, rusty and corrody. So, but you know, this RV is 25 years old. So let me take that out and take a look at it. Well, sure enough, the two amps blew easily. So this is the new fuse we just put in at two amps. And you can see it is burnt. So two amps is definitely not going to work. It means a trip to the store for a three amp fuse. And we'll see what happens. Three amps is what it's going to take. Because the two amp totally blew so fast. As soon as we turned it on, it burnt out. So we'll need a 3 amp fuse and see if uh, if it'll work with 3 amps. If it doesn't work with 3 amps, I don't know. You know. Um, trying to figure out how many 3 amps allows. 
Seems like three amps wouldn't allow that much voltage to go through. Supposed to be three amps? Well, you know it can't be too thick because uh, the original was pretty thin too. But yeah, it blew. 250, 312, three amps. So this sucked. Oh well, we're gonna go ahead and um, put the cover back on, make a trip to the store, and see if I can't get um, get this thing working. Because if I can, ah, that's like a big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean this thing out and just get rid of the um, the wasp nest that's here. This little, see that the little wasp, mud wasp. They made a nest here and get this guy back on there and um, go pick up a fuse matter of fact so I don't lose the um, the holder it's too easy to lose it I'm gonna put all this in here and leave it in here so that way when I come back it'll be here ready to go I, I won't lose it so we're gonna call that a day for now put this all back together Turn the knob here and get it to lock into place. It's missing one here on this side, the lock. But head to the store now and see what happens.